we are back at IFA 2015 here in Berlin, second day. It's a Saturday, um, we're still in Europe, of course, there's a Berlin in Europe. Actually, there are Berlins all over the world, kind of weird. I finally got some lunch, and um, but you know what, we immediately need to talk about something really, really interesting. I've been pitching it already for the last couple of days. Um, I've heard about this company about 18 months ago. There was a new startup building up uh, in the US and they acquired a bunch of very, very well-known people in this industry, in the smartphone industry. Um, some people who were part of the core team of Android, some designers from HTC, um, some people that are involved in the CyanogenMod um, company and um, they just started a new Kickstarter campaign three days ago and the company we're talking about is um, Nextbit and we have Matteo sitting over here and he brought something with him and it's this nice little sleek stylish Android smartphone I'm not even sure if we should call it an Android smartphone it's still running Android but it's quite different isn't it uh, yes, it is. Like I think, like at this moment, we, the way we talk about it, and just to, for the record, I'm not an official Nextbit person. Yeah. I um, I just like these people so much, and huh. they just gave me this T-shirt and this EVT, <laughs> <laughs> and and you know, like I like the community what we're trying to do so much. Right? And the, phone, the the way they build this phone, it's it's the first cloud phone, and and it's the first design-centric, consumer-centric smartphone they want to build. Okay, so what does that mean, a cloud phone? So what's, what's different about it? Um, and the, the way uh, the founders and the team think about this is, is that for in the last two, three years, there was not much innovation on, mm. on, on, on the Android and iOS right. um, handset scene. And the way what they want to do now is actually tackle some of the big problems and really, really innovate on. And the first problem they wanted to tackle is storage. Um, I don't know, like I talk to ga gamers here at IFA. You're, that's your typical problem. I play Angry Birds. I really, really progress f quite a bit. And then I really don't want to update my phone, <laughs> right? You you run into storage problems, and and also like like you know you're at, you're at a, a music festival, and you know you want to take a, a photo, and sorry you can't, right? Yeah. Because you just run out of storage. Yeah. So what we build in the first step is uh, a phone which un which has unlimited storage, mm -hmm. and the way it works is is for example if you haven't used a couple of your apps after some time, say for example six months, the APK gets uploaded to the cloud. Okay. If you have not used some of the pictures on your phone for a while, it becomes a thumbnail and the pictures itself is uploaded in the cloud. So it's basically kind of measuring or tracking my usage scenario, um, what kind of apps I use on a frequent base. And if I'm not using them for a couple of weeks or months or so, it tries to outsource them into the cloud. Um, yeah, th that's exactly what it does as, as a first step on in in the um, on 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 the software level. Yeah. And you know, like when you look at it, you know, it also looks very very differently. Um, it's you know, it has a very very different design. It's it's a lot of lines. Uh, it, it has multiple colors. Right. Uh, you know, you have you see these circles. Like people I've talked to compare it to very very like minimalist early brown design. Right. Totally. Um, you see these little dots here when the upload's happening, it starts to blink. Yeah. Um, it's, I think people really, really get that this is like people trying to do, that the next bit guys are trying to build something very different here. And what's also cool from the, can I just hold it for a second? When you see that from, from the front, um, you see those, um, those front facing stereo speakers, like on the, on, on the top and on the bottom. Um, so they're kind of round and, uh, it looks in general completely different. It looks like no other phone that is out there, which is quite difficult to achieve um, when you look at all these smartphone designs. Like you said already, it, it, it reminds you of a very minimalistic brown design. And uh, um, it's even though that this is just, of course, it's just a mock-up and, 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 and a non-working uh, dummy, but you already get an idea of the look and feel um, of this phone. Um, so they started a Kickstarter campaign, I think it was like three days ago. Yeah. And, or, or four days ago. And I think they wanted to 
they wanted to get like 500,000 US dollars. And well, what's, what's just the latest update on it? I think I, I looked this morning and it was over 800K. Okay, there you go. Right, so. Uh, and, and that was really what about, like, I think the Kickstarter campaign for the guys had a couple of, 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 of goals. The first one, they yeah. really wanted to, you know, get their ideas out there and get feedback on it. And, and they also get the community involved, right? Like, you know, when you, when you look at the comments uh, on the Kingstern down there, there's, uh, people are commenting and, we're really, and they're really, really, really listening. Yeah. And like, you know, storage is the first consumer problem they went in. Yeah. And they also want to listen to the community what the next big problem uh, really is and uh, react to it and hopefully soon. <laughs> and actually it also uh, comes with an, uh, with an open bootloader, so you can basically get whatever Android OS or mod on it. Well, they you're you're totally right. You know, like, and I think that's that's, that's another like you know strong signal where 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 this is going. They they want to sell the hardware, of course, but also convince people of um, using their uh, their OS. And uh, what you can see on the Kickstarter page is actually a nice walkthrough of their software. And once again, they are, they are a bunch of guys from, from the Android team and um, they're heavily customizing it in terms of um, the battery life. So it's heavily customized that you get a long battery life on this phone. And of course, how those, fly, uh, those files are getting dynamically uploaded into the cloud. I just really love this, this animation. So when when, our, when an app got stored into the cloud, it's just all kind of grayed out. Exactly. Right? And as soon as you're downloading it again, you can yeah, see you that on the it and color is coming back like in this whole way. Um, it's exactly. quite interesting. Um, this phone is right now available, by the way, on Kickstarter for, uh, for $299. Um, if you still can get an early bird, let me check. It's already sold out. They're all gone. So the first 1,000 um, um, early bird ones are gone. Lucky me, I got one. So you can still get one for 349, but they already sold 855 of the 349 ones, and it will enter the or for the retail channels. It will cost 399 dollars. Exactly, and I think the, like you know when you talk to to the team, uh, like. Um, the way Mike talks about it is this is the, the vision for this phone is is this is the last phone you want to need yeah. right so you will get software updates <laughs> from the next bit team here yeah. and and the, the idea is that once you buy this this phone will really really get better yeah. and there will be a community loop and it, there will be interesting things happening yeah um, it will be also available in two colors just to let you know so there is this yeah. kind of a light and bright version, and then there's a more, it's like a, like a darker gray. Let me actually see, maybe I can, I can show this over here. I think bluish, yeah. See, so this would actually be the second version of it. It's like it's a little bit bluish, yeah. right? And like a bluish. Maybe, you know what, oh, so, oh sorry, that, that, that was a little bit too quick for the camera. But I would like to show you something. Um, maybe we can just quickly um, get this demo video up, on, up and running where you can see how it, how it works on the storage so that you can get a little a better idea of how they're going to do that. Oh, let's see, internet, okay. So I think the scenario is here either the TED app or the Spotify app, you haven't used it for a while, and it's great. And... There we go. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. just take a look at the, at the Spotify and the TED app. Yeah, the you TED see app. It's all I think we the TED app and you see a progress bar on, on, on the TED app, and it will be coming back soon. So all these kind of grayed out apps are are stored in the cloud. Exactly. And, and it's you just tap on it and the color comes back and it's downloading it again. And by the way, not only the application, but also all the data that comes with this application. Uh, yeah, but like just to be even more specific, right? Things like your data, your passwords, they stay completely natively on your phone. The next bit team never has access to it. Yeah. So it's really just the software bit. 
So let's see. Oh, this was just a, 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 basically a user scenario where um, you're running out of storage on mm. your device and you still want to do a video, right? Mm -hmm. And it just tells you, I'm sorry, uh, there's no more internal storage left. And um, so, I mean, th and this happened to me actually a couple of times right, where I wasn't really thinking about it. And if you're shooting like, like a 1080p video, uh, especially with, with the new ones, if you're shooting a 4K video, those video files are massive. They're huge and they're big, right? So it's always great to have a little bit of a backup on a, a different way of kind of outsourcing content, data that is on your, on your phone into the cloud, but without, without the hassle of manually just doing this all the time, just saying, you know what, okay, Exactly. Get rid right. of this, so, so upload all these pictures and whatnot. Exactly. I mean, you you can tweak the system anyway, like in multiple ways. Yeah. But it's designed that you really don't need to tweak any settings. Yeah. And once again, here you can see that how that works with the Spotify app. Um, he was just uh, he's just about to download um, the Spotify app here. See that? Uh, here we go. So remember how gray the Spotify app looked like about 30 seconds ago, and now it's getting its color back until, and there we are. So now it's just uh, fully installed again. And what you can see over here is actually a little little control panel where um, your offloaded apps are yeah. on it, yeah. And you could, you could also uh, kind of pin apps when, when, you, when you think like, you know what, there are some specific and very, very important apps yeah. that I don't want to offload into the cloud so that you can keep them. Exactly, right? so you can tweak this, right? Um, but like it's, it's designed that you actually don't need to. So, um, I mean, they're working on this for quite a while, right? Especially uh, software infrastructure for this. Sure. And so I, I like you know like I think the, you'll you'll hear I think a lot of interesting communications from them in the next couple of weeks and months. Okay. And you know like the um, uh, Scott, Scott the the HTC design guy you know he was behind the first Nexus behind the HTC One series, and so you but he in this at next bit he has you know way less shackles on and he will be doing be able to do interesting things like this right um, 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 Mike he 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 built a lot of uh, power management yeah. on, on Android um, you, you know these are people who really you know have been out there they paid their dues and they they got together together with Tom to work on some more interesting things. But yeah. like I think you will hear more about it in in, in future, and and also the co community is really something they want to listen to to un to understand in which direction this phone needs to be you know taken to even another level. So it should be available at the beginning of 2016, right? Exactly. It's, they start shipping in in January, and most it sh the shipping should be done by February. Okay, interesting. So a couple of thousand phones that they already sold over Kickstarter. It, it, it went through the roof. And by the way, it's still available for the next 26 days. You can still get one of these 349 uh, phones. Do you know about, about the other specification? And you know what? I actually have no idea. I think it's, it's, it's running on a Snapdragon 808. Yes. And this is a 5.5 inch? I'm not I sure. think 5.2 if I remember correctly, but don't oh, yeah. nail me down on this. That, that, that makes sense. I think there was like, you know, there was a big um, like launch party in San Francisco on, on first day. Okay. And, and I think there was a great um, background piece yesterday with uh, um, where it's called discuss some of his design yeah. decisions. Um, for fans, check it out. I think yeah. you really good, get a good flavor of how the team is thinking about some of the choices and how inclusive they want to be with the community. 
So it has a 30 megapixel camera on the back, there's a 5 mm -hmm. megapixel camera on the front, 2680 um, battery, uh, it comes with a fingerprint sensor, and NFC, it has quick charging, and it also has um, a USB Type-C connector as far as I know. Um, it's only 7 millimeters thick and weighs around 150 grams. Um, 3 gigabytes of RAM and 30 gigabyte of internal storage, but as soon as you're buying this phone, you're getting 100 gigabyte of cloud storage, which is definitely good enough to really outsource a bunch of apps. And um, yeah, they're going to ship internationally because it's also supporting all the different LTE bands. So whether you are in the US or whether you are in Asia, also here in Central Europe, you shouldn't have any problem to uh, go onto your preferred 4G network or at least the preferred 4G network of your provider. Um, Besides that, it's just um, seriously. I just can't wait to to see the, the the working the working version and working model of it, and to play around with it. Because once again, this is a completely different approach to to smartphones in general. I agree. Like, like you know, like I um, I've known Tom uh, as a founder for for some time, and we were gra grabbing coffee, and I really got excited in this as a project. Yeah. Like for me, as as you know, I'm not as hardware geek as you are. Yeah. But like, what really really excites me is that you to have like a really consumer centric development process on software. Yeah. This is. I, I'm, it blows me away. It's like yeah. why I'm here with this T-shirt and this phone yeah. in my hand because I'm so excited about it. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, once again, if you want to get to know more about this, if you just Google Nextbit, and you will find the Kickstarter campaign, and then you should check it out. There are there's so much information on the Kickstarter campaign. You can see more pictures of this phone, and you can watch the videos. They have two videos up. One video that is just. Um, Telling you the story about the team and the people that are involved in this, and there's a second video that explain that explains the software, and this is very very unique. And once again, I just can't wait to see, um, you know, what 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 device they they are about to bring to the market. And this is going to happen in January. I, I've backed it up right away, as I said, and um, I think you know just, I mean. The look and feel of this device is so appealing, right? It is, it is so different from anything that I saw out there. Plus, on top of it, this idea of yeah, dynamically outsourcing content and, and apps um, that I don't need, uh, um, that is really smart. Um, I agree, right? And I've, I think, like, as mentioned, everyone who buys this on Kickstarter, you know, like, expect this phone even to be better six months from now. Because, like, you know, you, I think it will be, you, you know, in the next couple of weeks and months, you will hear in, in Kickstarter and, in, you know, and with talk by talking to people like you, you know, there will be a lot of engagement about how a really innovative, smart Android smartphone should really look like yeah. and what this really, really great team can do with it. Absolutely. Seriously, can't wait to check it out. Matthias, thank you so much for joining us here at the Tech Lounge. We are about to have a little break right now. Going to show you some, um, some show floor footage or some hands-ons. And uh, I'm pretty sure um, that the guys in the back end will find something interesting for you. And then we're going to be back um, in roughly about 10 minutes. And then it's all about the connect at home, about appliances. Uh, we're going to talk to um, Electrolux, which is part of AEG, one of the biggest brands in appliances globally. Um, it is uh, a huge, it's not a huge trend. It is just a huge industry. And it's a connected industry. And it's an industry that goes through a, a transformation. And it's quite interesting to see you know, what, what, what they will announce over here and what they have to show. So um, stay tuned. And I'll see you soon.